Hey, what's going on? My name is Jason Park. I'm a feature filmmaker and I'm with Hyper 2 Productions. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, kind of the pre-steps of what my thought process is as we go into production on our fifth, uh, fifth, on our fifth feature film, Rhino King. So up until this point, we've shot four features and that's been within the last five years. So I've kind of gotten into a rhythm of knowing what exactly that I do before we start shooting. So being that we're a few days away from the beginning of production, I kind of just wanted to walk you guys through what that's like for me. Now everyone's process is different, people do different things. Um, but what I did was, you know, you kind of go over the scenes that you know you're gonna shoot at this particular location. And you see, okay, well, what do I need within these scenes because when you get on set and you actually start doing the thing of filming um, you have to be open to change there's always going to be variables that change within the scope of filming and that's just normal that's natural you'll have something in your head it doesn't quite work for a scene while you're shooting it or the spacing's a little different so then you have to make adjustments so then you start looking in the scene into as to like okay what props do i really need for the scene so for me this morning, you know, I had to go and make sure that I had the wine, the wine glasses, uh, the yoga mats, um, and a couple other miscellaneous things for these particular scenes. Um, then, you know, you want to make sure that while everyone is there, that they're comfortable. So you want to have a good mix of, of beverages and, and, and snacks, which essentially is crafty. Fortunately, the difference between being on a well-funded set compared to something I would say that's independent is when it's well-funded, you have someone else that handles crafty. You have someone else that, you know, has the tea, the coffee, they make the, the meals and lunch and all this good stuff. When you're super indie, you kind of got to be a little more practical. So for me, I have a cooler. I fill it up with ice and you have water, green tea, frescas, you know, uh, Starbucks, ice Starbucks drinks. And that's pretty much kind of your mix as far as, you know, what's in the cooler. And then as far as crafty, it's like, you know, turkey jerky, potato chips, Cheez-Its, uh, mixed nuts, um, the little jelly fruit, you know, things that you can eat. And these are all just snack things. And then when lunchtime, you know, comes around, we'll just go get some food and just eat. So that's kind of that process on like how to take care of everyone while you're there. We shoot really quick, we shoot really fast, so that's just snacks for, hey, I'm on the side, I'm waiting while this scene is taking place, let me just get a little snack. Um, what's interesting this time around is for the past four films, we haven't gotten too much behind the scenes footage. We, we have behind the scenes footage, but it, it wasn't really documented throughout the entire process of the film. So what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to hire my son who is eight years old and I'm going to give him my cell phone. I have a, a Samsung Z Fold and I'm just going to let him walk around and push record while we're making, you know, the movie and, and capture footage. That way he's kind of out of the way. He's smaller. He's hidden and just let him enjoy and feel what it's like to be on set. I think that's going to be really cool. I think it's gonna be a good experience for him. And I'm looking forward to, to just having additional footage to play with. And the reason why that behind the scenes footage becomes so important is that when you know the movie is about to release, you have all this, this behind the scene footage of the process that it took to make it, right? You have a, a large audience that's, that's really interested in seeing the behind the scenes because Every film is different when you look behind the scenes. Every, you, you, sometimes you see the finished product and then you see the behind the scenes and you're like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, you know, that was done like that. And uh, in addition to that footage becomes um, extra marketing material and extra content for your subscribers or your fan base or anything like that for the project. So this project, Rhino King, is is very interesting it's a rom-com it's the first film that i'm making that i'm not starring in that i'm actually a side character which 
as a, as a writer, producer, filmmaker, director, the whole reason why I started making movies was so I could star in them, right? To give myself the opportunity. And this is very fascinating because, you know, sometimes you have to ask yourself, am I mature enough? Have I evolved enough to allow someone else to star in the project instead of yourself because it serves the story better and they will be able to uh, do a better job or not better but bring that more justice than you could in this particular scenario not to say that i couldn't play it but um the actor that i casted for the lead role in this is really good really talented and absolutely looks the part um so it's it's one of those things where it's exciting to be able to play a side character and, and hand the baton to someone else for this project and, and let them kind of do their thing while I do my thing behind the camera. The beautiful thing about you know us starting the shoot is on the first day, I'm gonna get majority of my scenes out the way. So once the majority of my scenes are out the way, we can focus on the entire cast for the remainder of the shoot. And we have a bunch of locations, we got a bunch of things going on. Like I said, it's a rom-com and, and I'm looking forward to shooting it. One of the main reasons why I decided to do a rom-com this time is one, we haven't done it, right? Rex Park was a, was a raunchy comedy. That was our first film. Um, you can watch it on here now. It's called Bad Luck Buddha. It's a PG-13 version for YouTube. But it was our first film. We learned a lot and it was film school for us. Our second film, Four Amigos, um, that's a street racing film set in Atlanta. I re-released it on, on this channel as Fast Atlanta. That's more of the director's cut. And you can watch that on here now. Our third film, oh, okay. So that was kind of like a, a street crime film. Our third film, Pizza Boy Rick, was, is more of a mystery thr thriller with elements of comedy. Um, I just released that on this YouTube channel as well. And then Always Smile is a is a drama, right? It's, it's a deep drama about brothers and that doesn't uh, come out until 2025. It's been done now for like six, seven months, but because I've submitted it to festivals, I'm kind of just waiting to see the results. So with Rhino King, you're getting a rom-com with, with drama and it's just different. With every project, I kind of like to do things differently. Even though I have the script for Four Amigos or Fast Atlanta, I have the script for the sequel, but you kind of just want to do things differently, experiment, see what your taste is, your style is. And it's one of those things that I think, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to shoot to see how we develop this film. So another thing I would say that's that's very different is you have different styles when it comes to filmmaking. You have some people that like to storyboard. They like to, to know all of their shots beforehand. For me, I'm a little more lackadaisical. I like to go to the space, be open, and just see what the space gives me, and then we shoot from there. Um, that's kind of been my method, my method of madness. The first film we, we did, I had a shot list, and I realized really quickly that that just didn't work for me. I just didn't like having a shot list of saying, okay, this is gonna be this, this is gonna be that. Because in the moments when you're in these locations, there's there's magic like there's something about it that just gives you magic and I think that you have to be open and receptive to that magic and then curate your scenes to that space to give the audience something unique so stick around guys what I'm gonna do is upload you know um, behind the scenes footage for this film as we progress over the next few months um, I'm going to share that footage, you know, that's shot by my son. So that's going to be very exciting. If you guys have any questions, you guys have anything you guys want me to talk about, let me know, leave a comment and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to oblige and, 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 you know, talk about some things that you guys may be interested in. I'm Jason Park with Hyper2 Productions. Until next time.